Okay, Joseph and Christiani here. Hi. Uh, at the request of Mr. Joel, he said he'd like to see an instructional video. We had uh, escaped near disaster, so we decided to uh, take a break from all the chaos. chaos and create this little training. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to start off with Christiana explaining like where the idea came from and how it evolved into that little animation that you saw in the group. Mm -hmm. How did you start? You see this picture up here. Uh, what inspired it? <laughs> I was stuck in the hospital with back surgery, so I couldn't exactly move. And I wanted to do something creative, because like I said, I was very, very bored. So I thought, you know what? I have not done animation in a long time, because I used to do a lot better, a lot hand-drawn animation so that's why this was more of a practice thing to just like start getting into it so you yeah. were in the hospital or you were in when you started this i was in bed rest in bed rest after the hospital after the hospital yes then you just wanted to be creative mm -hmm. and then you um just pulled up this little picture online yeah i research on uh, youtube for uh, references for images um, if it's just for my personal use which it usually is I'll look for pretty much anything on YouTube and download it and then trace over it if I'm going to show people then I'll uh, use copyright free um, videos but since I was kind of surprised that my mom shared it I wasn't really expecting it this is for you Joel yeah, and anybody, really. There's some tips in here when it comes to uh, animation and things I learned while she was explaining it while we were talking about doing the video. And maybe we'll just learn here. I, I don't, I'm not experienced with uh, Creative Cloud myself. Of course, it's like has more horsepower and more things you can do than simple Movavi and things we're doing. But uh, there's also principles here of animation and movement. Mm -hmm. that she's going to walk through. I may have not done animation professionally, but I have taken a lot of film and animation uh, classes in college from, surprisingly, my mom, pre-college degree, coming out soon. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you have your video here that you found online and you brought it up into the Creative Cloud. And basically, um, you started right here, like mm -hmm. with this frame? Um, well, it just kind of got stuck in the middle. Um, usually, if you import, this is Adobe Animate, by the way, you can use other animating programs. I like Adobe Animate because it's already built for animation specifically, but you can also use Toon Boom. Uh, Photoshop, a whole bunch of other stuff that I can't name off the top of my head, but uh, this is what I like to use. So. And what's this oh, you're using right here? Well, we put another camera on it, so yeah. you can you can see it's like a mouse and a. Right. This is uh, my Wacom tablet. I've had it for uh, over five years. So this is actually a pretty old tablet. Okay, it's very outdated. The Wacom tablets now are like 10 times better or that you just use uh, the ones with a screen like the Microsoft uh, Surface Right, things. like a regular, it looks like a tablet. Right, but I like using this because I've had it for so long and I'm used to it and it's a lot easier to control um, than just using the a regular mouse to draw anything. So. That's why I use it, and I like it, so... Uh, and, and, and to connect the dots with that, you know, mm -hmm. pun intended, you mm -hmm. actually have artist skills, though, right? Like, you yeah. spent your life as an artist. 19 years drawing, I've done it since I was a baby. I started right. on walls. <laughs> started on walls. <laughs> and crayons. Right here. Yeah, I have some, some artist expertise. I'm not great. Everyone else would say I was, but I don't think so, so 
Um, a little self-deprecation <laughs> there, but you'll, you'll see. You'll see the skills come through. <laughs> First of all, I imported the video into Adobe Animate. What you look for is import and then import video. And we are in the program section that says action script. I'm not fluent in Adobe Animate. I just know how the basics of and fundamentals on how it works. Um, so we're in action script and what I did was go to import, import video, which is if I can find it import video and I put embed H.264 which in computer terms means MP4 which you always want to use because everything else sucks. Never use AVI. Never. <laughs> Absolutely do not use it. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> uh, so I clicked on embed uh, video then I browsed through the timeline found my stuff um, and then you hit next and you just keep hitting next until it pops up. And you want it on its own layer because otherwise if you draw on that layer, it will actually erase everything and I will show you. So like let's add a keyframe which is animating terms for um, the actual frame itself, the drawing to the, the frame. Um, so if we add, so see, then it also just starts all up again and we don't want that. So let's backtrack. So, so this is taking a smooth video and breaking it down to frames? Yeah, that's, uh, that's what it's doing. It's actually importing the entire video and sticking it into a layer. The problem with this is that you can't really control the audio. See, you can kind of hear it in the background. Um, so I don't know how to f fix that really. But um, like I said, I just trace it. So then I can just delete the uh, bottom file, the reference file later. As you can see, once you click on a keyframe and make a new layer, it actually... Um, syncs up how many frames it is with the bottom layer which is pretty cool and a lot easier than uh, just adding a frame after frame after frame so uh, we are going to start the first frame so what I do is we of course put keyframe what I like to do is I like to select all that I want keyframed and you might not get this you may I don't know it says convert to frame by frame animation, which is the really cool part about Adobe Animate. It's for animating. Keyframe each frame, key keyframe e every other frame. The reason why you would want to do this of other frame, third frame, fourth frame, is because you work in timing. So every second or third, that's how fast or slow you're gonna get your animation. So it's kinda like frames per second? Yeah. Okay. So like see, look, we are just moving one frame and it's different. One frame and it's different. These these in-betweens are called shocker in-betweens. What you would normally do is you would draw every second or third frame to get the basic structure in. Then you would add these little movements. See like right there? You would add these little movements to um, make everything smooth because if you didn't everything would look robot-y and clunky and it's just no bueno so first we're going to start on the keyframe and as you can see it's like a let me see it's a little tiny bubble a little clear bubble now once we start um drawing it will actually fill the bubble like this little black one and that's what we want so what we're going to do is we're going to hit B, which is the brush tool. This is your brushes. Um, you got your brush library, transform tools, colors, swatches. I nor this FYI, this is my workspace. Um, you can customize it. I have it on as workspace, and you'll see animator, 
classic. They all have different um, presets for how you want your animation structure to be. I personally like it this way because I want to see the full screen. Um, the timeline's itty bitty because I don't have, it's not that really important for me to see it while I'm drawing. And the tools are very important because you need to know pen pressure, which is how much pressure you add to the pen. So without pen pressure, you'd have this, which doesn't look as good. Because with pen pressure, you can go as light or as hard as you okay, want. Okay, like it's the thickness of the stroke. Right. So we're going to go and brush. We're going to... It gives us a lot of options for colors. Let's go... Yeah, you know what? Let's just go with teal. Because that's the colors that we go with, right? I'm going to zoom in. And we're just going to... Trace over it. Very loosely. I go very loosely when I'm and sometimes I don't even add the I didn't even add the face because it's just uh, time consuming. This is definitely a very tedious tedious work so the full animation that you guys saw actually took me all day to make and I literally mean all day <laughs> like I started at 9 I took like a break at 12 and then I continued until like what 8? so we have the first keyframe Ta -da! next what we do which is why I like to use a shortcuts because it's a lot faster than um, instead of right clicking so this is what you would normally do if you didn't use shortcuts, which is right click, insert blank keyframe for the next one. What I do is F6. F6, it uh, ties into Windows and uh, Mac, so it doesn't matter because I've had a Mac before and it still works. Now we have the next frame. What I like to do is I use uh, onion skin which shows the outline of the previous image. It shows the outline of the previous image so then you actually know where the hell you're going. Because without it, you would be very, very lost. You'd be like, where the hell is it? I don't know. This is why you have onion skin. And it's a very, very, very useful tool. So we're on frame two. And we're just going to still loosely sketch. And see, like I said, it's, it's very time consuming. What I usually do, instead of just staring at this for hours, because then I would get very, very bored is just listen to music just zone out sometimes I can do this for hours and not even know I've been doing this for hours so here is the second frame and as you can see now we have a little bit of a movement there so if you go between the first frame and the second frame can you turn off the background to see what that looks like and turn off onion skin that's what it looks like and it was pretty crappy right now, but uh, this is just the beginning stages. It definitely looks uh, better once you clean it up. This is, like I said, just a rough sketch. So, um, now with the difference here with this, what I did differently compared to this is the original artist who did this was pretty good but she or he made it uh, more realistic so see when she jumps there's not there there's a little bit of a stretch but not much the key thing to make your animations look realistic in the sense that in real life 
we actually don't squash and stretch, which is an animation term for actually squishing like a pancake or stretching like um, a rubber band. Yeah. This artist didn't really do that. I'm pretty sure that this artist also traced like I did. So what I did differently is that see how hard it looks like she's hitting. So see, it looks like she's stretching and then hitting hard, which shows weight and mass. And the other, the other lines that you have in there that look like mm -hmm. almost like a tornado mm -hmm. around that. So right. is that showing the twirling motion as well? Mm-hmm. And I actually made that myself. So you can see with her tutu, like the spinning part, it when she goes up, the skirt goes up when she goes down, when she presses down, it flattens, which is another squash and stretch technique because if it, it makes it look better. It, may, it makes your brain happy. I don't know why it will go up more in animation. If it goes down, if you go down like you're jumping, everything goes down more. Everything is exaggeration well, in because animation. There's, there's no context. Right. For you to see, there's no background or anything, so right. it has, you have to have an indication right. of what's going on. Right, like for example, this part when she jumps, you can't really tell that she's jumping, right? Like she's landing, her face hasn't changed, the rest of her body really hasn't changed. Um, but with this, Her head moves, her um, skirt, the tutu changes as well. It's like flowing as she lands. And see, she has like weight to her. Without it, it just would look funky, which it does with right here. It just looks like she's just landing on a cloud. But that's not how people are not clouds. We we don't we don't weigh clouds. Sorry, we just we just don't. You need that movement, otherwise it doesn't it doesn't sell. See how she bounces? Right. That little bounce makes all the difference. It's just not gonna look right. It's gonna be like there's something wrong with that because um, in animation there is a action and reaction. There's always the recoil. Like whenever you see someone fighting, you will have like, it will always have the arm back before the punch, right? And then let the punch go, but the whole body will twist. There's a, other animators better than me who can explain this better, but um, before you punch, you recoil your arm back. Right, so you give an indication, like right. swirling around the arm. Right, you give the indication, and then you hit the punch. Otherwise, if you just like, if you didn't have that little that little punch, it would just be like, this. that doesn't show force. How hard is that punch? It just looks like this. It's not gonna show. You have to actually reel it back. Yeah, this these these drawings aren't showing well, but. Uh... So I mean, it's the basic overview. The two right. frames that you did. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, you could spend the whole time here and recreate yeah. it. It's basically that process mm -hmm. over and over again right? through to the end of the frame. But then you had the accentuations of the the animating um, uh, nuances, process. right? The processes. And then you also, if you go back to the beginning, you created uh, like an intro. Like the, can you, can you bring that back up again? Yeah, where you have it like her coming almost out of flames or out right. of wind or whatever that is and you created that pretty much on your own mm -hmm. right right and i created the um other swirls like see how her skirt's lifting up and lifting down and all that and like i said you um have to kind of have that artist thought process to be brave enough to go you know what i'm not adding that 
So like, uh, for example, at the end here, she actually has these little sleevey things, but um, in my filmmaker brain and artist brain, it's saying, but she didn't have it before. See? She doesn't have it before. Where did this come from? Where did these sleeves come from? Right? Oh, right, right. So I, I was, so I was like, you know what? I ain't going to add sleeves. So as you can see, it looks a lot more congruent because I didn't add the sleeves. Does it go any further? See, I had like a little bit of a hint of sleeves. And I also kind of added like hints of sleeves at the beginning too. They're like uh, very... Right, and I'll see... I'll, I'll stop. I want to interrupt because mm -hmm. she was... Well, I'll speak to you. You were um, very hesitant in sharing because it's almost like, well, I used a reference. I didn't just dream this up out of nothing. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it's an art, artist thing, almost like a, a guitar player doing cover songs or, right. or something like that, or any musician doing cover songs. But all these little nuances here, I kept saying, you know, these are all original. I didn't even know about the sleeves until right now, honestly. So, <laughs> you know, it's it, she put her own spin on it and her own skills on it. The original comment was, "Wow, she captured the lines of ballet. It wasn't, it wasn't dream, dreamt up that way." All right. But on top of that is all the other skill that comes into play that makes it look like what it is. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth her sharing that, in, in my opinion, anyway. So, is there anything else you want to comment about that, as far as like um, what you saw on top of that vision? But I just, I just like animating. It's, it's fun and. I just think it's really cool to see the process afterwards, to see all that hard work of all you're doing all day is just staring at a picture, like a picture's worth a thousand words. How much do you think an animation is? It's literally picture after picture after picture. Staring at pictures all day and then at the, at the end of the day and you see this cool thing come out of all that work, it's just, it makes you feel good makes me feel good um and definitely the blue in the background and the black background was my original idea because i was originally first thinking i wanted to make some kind of cool animation where it looks electric like this um and actually you guys don't know this but it's actually not finished yet i what i wanted to add to it was um when she's stepping i wanted to add like a like a puddles ripples in the water um i wanted to add more of a glow around her because it's a little um it's electric because it's a black background but i wanted to add to that redo this to extend it to make the swirls like with the swirl i actually had to work backwards because it didn't look right when I worked um, the swirls this way up, so like out of nothing into something. So I actually had to work backwards and draw around her frame, then kind of tear it to pieces in the sense. See, it kind of goes up. Right. Which was pretty hard to do, thinking backwards. Because you're not thinking backwards, you're thinking forwards, but you have to think backwards. So what usually, um, well, pretty much all animators, I don't know an animator who doesn't do this, is that they usually scrub backwards and forwards just to make sure that they're doing it right. They're getting the right, um, so it's, it's, it's tedious work, but it's, I like it. It's um, definitely a zen zoning out moment for me. I like drawing, so. Yeah, and even right here for this recording, now you can see actually Cam Viewer is up twice. Those of you who have the U box, we oh, I've been we like, hacked the system. I've been anal about setting up a second camera right here so that we could have the tablet, and we were able to set up Cam Viewer t running twice. So that's that's but she did something to make it work. But then for, to fill the dead space down at the bottom, or let's go like this, down at the bottom right here. Okay, <laughs> click it. Yep. Yeah. Um, for the brand logo spot that we usually have, uh, she actually came up with that 
on the fly, and you drew it in what, 10 minutes maybe? Five. Five? About. Five, five minutes. So using the same platform, same mm -hmm. tablet and all that, mm -hmm. just, just whipped it out, and you know, it's just what she does, and she has a director's mindset, you know, we went to the movies and all the trailers, uh, you know. We oh, I, nip I nitpicked all the new movie trailers. And, and then on top of that, we have, um, you know, include that into the mix with what we what we were talking about for the, the continuation of this project, if you will, dance animation with multiple types of dancers. Um, she said Joel's getting in her head because we were talking about different types of dances. Different girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, hard music, soft music, hard music, like classical, then like dubstep or metal or something like that, then yeah. classical again, and on girl. It's, it's in work in progress, but it's, it's going to be cool, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that helps. Maybe you'll mm -hmm. learn a few things here. We don't want to make this too long. We have a nightmare setting this up. I think this is, this is the second time or third time we tried this. Ah, uh, third. Third time. So there it is. Y'all enjoy your night. I hope everything's going well for you all. Thank, and we'll thank you for you. watching. Thanks for requesting Joel and all you other guys who uh, requested in the comments. Thanks for saying it's great, even though I don't think it is. But thank you. <laughs>